Stay on top of stories about stocks that may impact the market or your portfolio today in Stocks Making News. So what exactly does the new Star Wars movie mean to the Disney company and its stock since now Disney owns the Star Wars franchise? We're going to see if Tracy Reinick and Dave Bartosiak can tell us, answer that question, because that is a question that's on every investor's mind right now, I would imagine. Dave, let's start with you. Outperformance at the box office on the opening weekend doesn't seem to have provided any kind of an awakening for the stock, though. Uh, Stock trading at a two-month low, down 13% below the all-time peak of, a do of $122.08 a share. What's going on? Well, <laughs> we talked about it the, in our video in October, right? Yeah. And I called it the Battle of 108 oh. on shares of Disney. Um, and, and we just bounced in, in August. You know, everybody... All the stocks went down, right? Came down those August lows. September, we retested. I was excited about this because it came back down in September, but it didn't reach the August lows, and things looked okay. But then I said there's the battle at 108, which was the bottom end of the earnings gap, and if we can get through there, then things will be bullish. Mm -hmm. It did get through there. Things were bullish up until about 120, so you're within kind of earshot of that all-time high you were talking about, mm -hmm. and then it just ran out of gas, hit a flat tire, and it's sold off since, like you mentioned, two month low. Yeah. And now it's, you know, 106. Um, so the next logical step is that century mark. So I think they come down, back down to 100 before, you know, this thing can go back up. So let me try to take a, a glance to maybe a positive side here through all of this. Could the stock be setting itself up for a fresh base? Totally. It could bounce at 100, and we could be we could be going higher. Maybe there was a lot of you know kind of expectations priced into the stock surrounding the the Star Wars uh, release. I don't know what else people could have expected, right? Because as Tracy would go into it, it actually they, they killed it, they crushed it. Yeah. When I go to the toy store, I don't go to the toy store that much, but you know, it's <laughs> Christmas. Um, the Star Wars stuff everywhere. Right. Toy store, bookstore, insert store here. There's Star Wars stuff. There's Star Wars stuff at the gas station. Yeah. I mean, it's everywhere. But maybe there was just too much expectation priced in. Tracy, uh, as Dave alluded to, movie brought in a record amount of money on yes. its uh, opening weekend compared with what the expectations were on the street prior. So, you know, and Dave, you probably know too, sometimes when movies debut like this, you've got uh, maybe a tale of two stories here for investors. Sometimes investors see it as an opportunity to take some profits off the table in the company that owns the, the franchise. Sometimes it means another leg up for uh, the stock as far as investors are concerned. Tracy, what do you think this means? Well, we've talked about how you know Disney is not just the movies. Right. A lot of the emphasis right now, obviously, this week is on Star Wars. But they also have Marvel, Pixar on their movie area, and let's not forget Frozen, yes. which, you know, will have a sequel, and that will probably do well. So they have a lot of good things going on in their entertainment arm, but they do have these other wings of the company um, that you also have to put into place, and that means um, there's their uh, amusement parks. And they're expected to open up uh, Disney Shanghai in mm -hmm. this coming year, which should be huge for them. So that's another positive that this company is saying. But then you have on the negative side the struggling, you know, media area with right. um, ESPN. ESPN. Mm -hmm. uh, the analysts are still really negative on ESPN and don't expect that area to grow much more out of the single digits for the next couple of years. So you have this, this tale of two companies right. and, and people were very optimistic because the one side is doing so well, but you can't forget the other side. The interesting thing is I brought what the analysts are saying right now, the earnings estimates, and you can see over the last 90 days, both for this year's estimates and next year's, it's starting to trend slightly higher. So this is going in the right direction. I looked to see if you know anything had really been cut since the movie came out. And um, no, it, I've seen a couple of raises for this year and one already for next year in the last week. So the analysts do expect the movies and the merchandising and everything to go along with it to add to the bottom line next year. But you're still only gonna get about 9% earnings growth this year and another 10 next year. 10 is good, 
this is a big company and it's been around forever, but you're paying 18 times right now for that 10% earnings growth. Mm -hmm. That's not exactly cheap. It's not as expensive as it was when it was at 120, right. but it's not a value stock here, and I'm paying a lot still to get only 10% earnings growth. There's also a uh, detail of a pesky bearish analyst report that's hanging out there that came out, uh, according to published reports, on the same weekend just prior to the opening of the movie, uh, the bearish report contained a, a downgrade that uh, doesn't right. seem to be helping the company. Right. I mean, some of the analysts, they're the, looking at it realistically, and they're not all going gaga over the Star Wars numbers. That's all great, but you have a lot of moving parts to that this company, and not everything is moving in the upward direction. And going to your point of a moment ago, uh, the other movie franchises that they own, that are under their umbrella. Uh, reports that I've seen say that uh, those movie franchises can be cash cows for this company for the next five years. So if fiscally the company may be okay, maybe this can offset its uh, ESPN woes, right? But ultimately, Dave and Tracy, what does it mean for the investor? Take some money off the table, buying opportunity. Um. I, I think if you have a long-term approach to it, right, it's it's going to be a buying opportunity for sure. As a Disney down at a hundred bucks, um, it just depends on how great those cash cows become over the next couple of years. Yeah. And what are they going to do with that money when it comes in? Are they going to put it in more high-growth areas where they can actually, you know, add some EPS growth, or is it just going to kind of cover losses? So that kind of remains to be seen. But I think you know, over the longer term, I you know can't go wrong with Disney. It's Mickey Mouse for crying out loud. Right. If you're a long-term shareholder, which a lot of people are in this company, um, especially they buy it for their children and sure. their kids' accounts and things. Um, you're fine, you're getting a dividend, you just, just stay in it, you know. If it goes down a lot more, um, I would consider that a buying opportunity if I could get it cheaper than at 18 times. If I'm getting it 15, 16 times, I would be buying at those levels. If I'm trading it, that's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. um, but for long-term investors, it's not super cheap yet. If it gets cheaper, I really like it. All right, we'll just wait and see if the force is with Disney on this one. In the meantime, if you want to check out other stock commentary, stock picks, stock picking strategies, don't forget, you can find it all on our website, zax.com. Link to it all off the homepage, as a matter of fact. And if you're watching our videos on the YouTube platform, there is where you can subscribe to them and even comment on them, as many have done. Feedback's always welcome. With Tracy and Dave, I'm Terry Ruffalo.